when the Steamboat Geyser in Yellowstone National Park, which emits more water than any active geyser in the world, revived in 2018 after three and a half years of inactivity. Some speculated that this was a sign of a possible explosive volcanic eruption in the surrounding geyser basin. This so-called hydrothermal explosion can throw mud, sand, and rocks into the air and release hot steam, endangering lives. A new study by geoscientists who study geysers refutes that idea, finding little indication of the underground magma movement that would be a prerequisite for an eruption. The geyser is located just outside the caldera of the country's largest and most dynamic volcano, but no major eruptions have occurred in the last 70,000 years. Hydrothermal explosions, essentially explosions of hot water due to contact with hot rock, are one of the biggest hazards in Yellowstone, said Michael Manga, professor of Earth and Planetary Sciences at the University of California, Berkeley, and senior author of the study. The reason it's problematic is because it's so hard to predict. It's not clear if there are any precursors that would allow you to provide warnings. He and his team found that, although the ground around the geyser rose and seismicity increased slightly before the geyser was reactivated, and the area is currently emitting more heat into the atmosphere, no other dormant geysers in the basin have become active again. The groundwater temperatures that drive the steamboat eruption also did not increase, and no series of steamboat eruptions other than the one that began in 2018, occurred after a period of high seismic activity. We did not find any evidence of a major eruption. I think that's an important thing, he said. Manga, who has studied geysers around the world and created them in his own laboratory, and his colleagues answered three main questions about the steamboat geyser. Why is the geyser reappearing? Why do the time periods vary so much, ranging from 3 to 17 days? And why the spike is so high? The team found answers to these two questions by comparing the column heights of 11 different geysers in the United States, Russia, Iceland, and Chile with the estimated depth of the water reservoirs where the eruptions occurred. They found that the deeper the reservoir, the higher the eruption jets. Steamboat geyser, with a reservoir about 25 meters, 82 feet, underground, has the highest column up to 115 meters, or 377 feet, while the two geysers that Manga measured in Chile were among the lowest eruptions at about 1 meter, 3 feet, high from the reservoir 2 and 5 meters underground. What is actually done is fill a container, get it to a critical point, empty it, then run out of liquid which can erupt until it is filled again, he said. The deeper you go, the higher the pressure, the higher the pressure, the higher the boiling temperature, and the hotter the water, the more energy it has, and the higher the geyser. To explore the reasons for steamboat geysers' variability, the team collected records related to 109 eruptions since it became active again in 2018. The records include weather and river flow data, seismometer readings and ground deformation, as well as observations by geyser enthusiasts. The researchers also looked at previous active and inactive periods of steamboat and nine other Yellowstone geysers, as well as land surface thermal emissions data from the Norris Geyser Basin. They concluded that variations in rainfall and snowmelt may be responsible for some of the variable periods, and possibly other variable periods of geysers as well. In spring and early summer, with melting snow and rain, underground water pressure pushes more water into underground reservoirs, causing more hot water to erupt more frequently. During 
During winter, with less water, lower groundwater pressure will refill the reservoir more slowly, leading to longer eruptive periods. Because the water pushed into the reservoir comes from places even deeper than the reservoir, it is tens or centuries old before it erupts back to the surface, he said. In October, Manga's team members demonstrated the extreme impact that water shortages and drought can have on geysers. They showed that Yellowstone's iconic Old Faithful geyser stopped erupting entirely for about 100 years in the 13th and 14th centuries, based on radiocarbon dating of mineralized lush pole pine trees that grew around the geyser during its dormancy. Normally the water is too alkaline and the temperature too high for trees to grow near active geysers. The dormancy period coincided with a lengthy warm, dry spell across the western U.S. called the medieval climate anomaly, which may have caused the disappearance of several Native American civilizations in the West. <laughs>